So this is a uh, Baja Motorsports Baja Warrior or whatever. Uh, I picked it up at an auction a little bit ago for $55. Of course, it was the last thing that they sold, so we stayed there for the whole time. And it, well, either way, we left with some other stuff that we didn't need, but this was the main thing we went after, and we got it. First of all, this is the biggest mini bike that we have and that I've ever seen. Uh, this is bordering on the point where it's not really a mini bike. Like, this is the size of a Honda Grom. Like, you've seen one of those. Uh, it's the same size. Um, it's, it, it's a pretty cool looking little bike. It's got this really nice metallic green that's going to clean up super good. Uh, and this thing really just needs a pretty good bath. Um, but that ain't going to happen today because it's, it's too wet. And if I get wet, uh, I'll melt and then, you know, no more videos. So I'm not going out. I think that we got a pretty killer deal on it. Uh, once again, 55 bucks. The cheapest one I've seen goes for about 400 on Marketplace. Um, obviously, this is a little bit rougher shape. Uh, it's been sitting a while. Uh, the tires, you know, it's only flat on that side, so that's good. It makes rolling this thing around really easy, you know? Motor, motor does turn over. Um, I did mess with it a little bit. That's why this carburetor's off, or the air cleaner's off. Uh... You know, ignore the spark plug that's hanging out. That's That looks terrible, but that's fine. Um, this fender's kind of had a hard life. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, once it's cleaned up and everything, I may try to take it off, try to straighten this back out. Uh, the gas tank actually is super clean inside. Not that, you know, you can see anything. I mean, it's got some trash and stuff, but like, what's that orange thing? Oh, that's, is that like a float level type thing? I don't know. So it's a 196cc motor. I saw that they were advertising this thing as having six and a half horsepower. I don't know about that. That seems like a stretch because the Predator 212s, which is a bigger CC, only makes like, is that five and a half or is it six? I don't know. Anyway, I feel like this is a stretch. Seats in pretty decent shape. This is the most comfortable mini bike that I've sat on. And keep in mind, I've sat on maybe four. Okay, that says something. Uh, that one over there, that little red one, that sucker sucks to sit on. But man, is it fun! It's just, a, it's just a perfect little bike, you know. The only thing not perfect is the seat. That's that thing sucks. But I'm also a grown man on a kid's bike. So that might have something to do with it. Uh, front fender's pretty good. The tire's flat too. That's good. Oh, it's only flat on this side. Oh, that's a mean dry, dry, dry. That's a mean cracking right there. Baron's good. Uh, I didn't show you the other side, but these pegs, you know, that's fine. Uh, the other side's like that. And there's a piece of rebar in that corner that was held on with this and this, with these two hose clamps. And that was the guy's pegs. Um, so that's approved. The clutch, you know, it might need to be oiled. You know, um, uh, and I am missing some sort of uh, jack shaft. Uh, the, that's what she's, oh, the key's missing too out of that. That's interesting. Uh, so. Uh, I don't really think I want to want to do a torque converter because I am cheap. So I'm going to try to scrounge away uh, some, some parts to fix this and then go from there. Oh, I forgot to own the forks. That's had a hard life. So once that used to like stop right back there, but now the new stop is just the gas tank. So that's, that's good. And this has got some water in it before and froze up. You can tell by the way that is. So, that's going to have to get welded back up. Uh, and the same thing here. I'll just hit that back where it's decent and then booger weld it back with that little thing. Also, ignore this whole situation. That was our old washing machine, and I kept the sides off of it for metal because metal's expensive. Uh, I haven't checked the oil in it. Mm-hmm. Ain't got none. That's good. If it does, it's really low. Now, the biggie, 
that y'all probably already seen, is, you know, someone may have laid it over. That is a good looking exhaust shield though. I'm, I may steal that for that bike, if it'll work. And it won't because I'm looking at, there's supposed to be a bolt that does that and it's not there, so that's good. Plan, um, if you've watched any of my videos, you know the plan for this thing is to build it as cheap as possible because I am cheap. Um, so I've already been messing with this motor a little bit. Uh, I just took everything off, like I mentioned, and uh, started just looking into it. And I've determined that it doesn't have spark. Uh, and I think someone tried to remedy that before because this spark plug, it was threaded in like one or two threads. So in this video, I think all I'm gonna do is try to get it running. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna start watching videos on what you do if there's no spark on these motors and then come back and then try to try to do something. I don't know. I'm also sitting so close to the uh, garage door that my back is just getting sprayed with like mist and water and stuff. So that feels refreshing. Oh, that's nice looking in there. Oh. That's good. Uh, this was on like a farm type area, by the way. Like, it was kind of just like a wrecker service, but it was just all dirt and stuff. It's also pretty clear it's been sitting for a while. Yeah, those are pretty dusty. Those are... Those are going to have to get cleaned up. So I figured out that, at least on a Briggs flathead, um, you clean these up, and then that's like your magnet type thing, and you clean that up too, and then maybe it'll work, I don't know. Well, I cleaned this up while I was off, so now the rest of the bike just looks terrible. Um, but this looks pretty good. Uh, so spark plug's out, so I guess grounded it to something. Oh! Oh! That was easy. Oh, it shocks you too, that's fun. We're gonna see if this wants to do anything. That was too much. That's good. That's what you want. So what does it mean when fire comes out of that and then uh, a gunshot comes out of that side? I don't know. I need to figure that out. But uh, it does something. So at least to me it's pretty obvious that it's uh, timing related. So it could be uh, like a loose foul flash issue underneath this little cover. Um, I think you set those to four thousandths. I don't know, I need to look into it a little bit more. Or it could have backfired before and sheared the the uh, like the set key on the flywheel, so I need to check that. Uh, so I'm gonna pull this off. Just that is the can. Uh, I need a flashlight. So you may not be able to see it, but um, what that would look like is there would be a hole or like a slot in the crank where that key would be and then this hole would be like somewhere else with it like it sheared the uh timing like it sheared the uh thing in, in half or whatever uh, and i don't see that so i'm gonna assume that it's good also this like line right here that makes me wonder if like this was underwater at some point because it's just, it's just kind of weird how you know, I don't know. Uh, also, I mean, look at the mud. But that could just be from someone riding it. So, uh, next, I guess I'm going to throw all this back together and then look at the underneath the valve cover. 
Oh God, Jesus. Oh, it's really clean under there surprisingly, so. Dude, that's super clean in there. And I can reuse this gasket, that's good for me. Oh goodness. Yeah, uh-huh. Hey, look at that little cute little push rod. Oh, that's the cutest little thing. I want to take it out, but I'm scared too. Um, this motor is super clean inside. I was expecting like some stuff, but like this is no stuff. Raining, raining now. Also, I took this push rod out. I'm kind of glad I did, even though I'm not going to do anything about it. It's bent as heck. You can see it. Um, so... If I had another one of these motors, I might try to rob it, but um, probably not going to do anything about that because, I don't know, I, I have nothing I can do about it because I don't have any of these. Um, they move. You hit my finger. Bigger hammer. I got a three pound down here. Easy. Not a lot. Or how much? Yeah, not a lot. Yeah, do it again. It's not bad, is it? It's not. Did it move any at all? I think it came back. Hold on. Well, what we still want to go is rotating the motor. And why is that tight now? Okay. Uh, this valve isn't coming all the way back up for some reason. Either I'm going to say that it's bent or something, but we're. I'm just going to pull the head off, you know, for funsies, and then and well, we we straighten this. We straighten this push rod out, so you know. I don't see any reason we can't straighten the valve out. One, or two in here. Just like dowel pins? Yeah, it's just dowel pins. I got it. It was just the dowel pins were that stiff. I should have took the push rods out. And there's a stuck valve. So I'm gonna take that out. Gonna have to take that out and see what the issue is. This has definitely been underwater. Because there should not be mud in there. I mean, it could be worse. That doesn't look like it's... Oh, that's smooth still. So that's, that's good. It's not pitted or anything. That's really not that bad, I don't think. Piston's not really scarred up or anything. It looks a lot better than some I've seen, so that's already a plus. So they're definitely stuck. All your compression is just going out the window, and that's why it's shooting flames at you. Was that a retainer? What was that? I pushed down on this. 
wondering when this came out. So I don't, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's easy enough. There's your little valve stem sill right there. And it should just push out, I would think. But that just doesn't want to come out of there, does it? Nope. What was that? Oh, it's the other thing you have the other one. So those just sit there? That seems dangerous. Well, it ain't bent, I don't think. We'll throw it in a drill here in a second, but it doesn't look bent. That's disgusting in there, though. That ain't bent. It's got some crud on it, so it's gonna get a scotch bright and take care of that. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna say that's all it was, is there's some pretty good size chunks of rust right there. Uh, this seating surface looks pretty bad. So I guess let's just wing it. It's a lot better in there. So just that. With how clean this motor is, I'm going to be really surprised if this thing doesn't run really good. Because, well, the bike says otherwise, but this motor doesn't look like it has very many hours on it at all. Cool. So now we have an operating head. And should have some decent compression now that it's not all going out the intake. So I don't know what to do about this exhaust. See, the threads, it's not even that, that's just broken off, the threads have been pulled out, pulled out too. That's what I was cleaning out a while ago for. I should have some brake cleaner in there. There's just, there's just nothing in that. So, that's a issue for another day. Right now, we're worried about getting it run, running. And it's not like it's not going to have any exhaust. It's going to have a mean exhaust leak, I can tell you that. But it, I'll put the exhaust back on there. So, we'll figure that out. Um, obviously, I'm not going to spend money on a new head gasket for a motor that I think is good you know, think is good, um, but I have heard, I don't know how true it is, but I have heard that people used to, uh, just spray paint their head gaskets and put them on when they're still tacky, that way when you put it on there, it basically does the same thing as a copper head gasket coating, it just, like, squishes out, feeling a lot of, like, the blemishes and stuff. I'm missing a head bolt. That's what we want to see. That seems torqued enough. Now the GoPro is about to die, so I'm going to do the other two. And then probably, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Just a quick side note while I'm putting, while I'm putting in these uh, last two head bolts. Remember when I looked into the tank, uh, there was like this float looking thing? This thing's got a fuel gauge on it. I'm assuming that when that's cleaned up, um, there's like a little line that shows you how full it is. Keep in mind, I don't know how you're supposed to look at it, but there's a, there's a, there's a fuel gauge on there. That's pretty cool. I was also able to just push these springs down uh, and then wiggle that on there. That way I didn't have to worry about valve lash or anything. So that should, should be fine. Oh yeah. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but it's the next day. Uh, managed to get this exhaust back on. Um, I was able to clean out this hole and there's just enough threads in there to start a bolt with a, a bunch of washers, but you know, that's fine. And I got the exhaust shield back on there, so should have an exhaust. There's not a gasket or anything, but I did clean up the surfaces. Um, so next, 
Uh, I gotta put the valve cover back on the carburetor, but I think I'm gonna actually try to blow this carburetor apart and try to let it soak a while to clean up. Maybe. I don't know. It's pretty rough looking right now, but we'll see what we can do. Also, these little carburetors are made in Japan. That's pretty neat. It's already on, so there should be fuel there. There you go. good it's idled way too high because uh, when you try to take the choke off I'm scared it's gonna go too high and do something stupid so I need to address that but I mean it smells terrible in here now but it runs pretty good I'm gonna let it sit there oh look at the stuff falling off of it I think it needs to warm up a little bit before I start messing with idle I messed with this a few times off camera trying to get it to idle better uh, and I just can't get it to idle off of choke so that tells me that I need to dig into this again and for the price of these I just went ahead and replaced it which means that this new carburetor is the first thing that I've bought for this so far so I think that's doing pretty good uh, it's pretty it's pretty too uh, that was literally $17 so I can't complain too much on that. Um, so we're gonna fire it up here in a second, see if it wants to idle a little bit better. So when I got this bike, I only had the bottom portion of the air box that goes right there. So uh, I made this like one barrel carburetor air cleaner work on here because I didn't really want to spend money on a actual like cone filter that like there's an adapter that goes here and then it sticks out so far. I don't, those kind of look cool, but also not really, I don't know. Um, so, this is literally just, I took the factory like, stud out that you screw the wing nut onto, uh, drilled a hole, put a bolt right there, and then, you know, you can get the idea. It was barely too small, so I extended this side out with some rubber and some like, Gorilla Glue adhesive or whatever. That way it just, there wasn't just like a big hole where air was getting through. So. I mean, it looks good from this side, and that's all that matters. Well, 
That was easier than I was expecting. That's already off choke and it's just sitting there idling as pretty as it can be. Throttle felt a little weird right there, but it's also like, well, it's running, it's walking away. Look at it. Um, it was also cold. It's also very cold. It's been sitting for a couple days, so that may have something to do with it. Also, this exhaust sounds terrible. It sounds like a lawnmower. That's gonna have to get. That's gonna have to change. Okay, well, it runs perfect. Um, I was just looking. There's still a ton left to do to get this thing riding. Uh, and I kind of wanted to get that done in this video, but I'm already assuming this video is getting pretty long. Um, so I think I'm going to go and split this up into two videos. Uh, so I... So I got it running, didn't get it riding. That was one of the goals, but that's fine. 55 bucks plus $17 for the carburetor. That is 55, hold on. $72 in this thing so far. Uh, I think that's, that's pretty good. So next video, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wash this thing, cause it needs it bad. Um, wash it. Try to dig into a jack shaft, jack shaft setup. Uh, I'm really just missing one, and I clutch in a bunch of chains and stuff. Um, I don't know, like little pieces like that, or this is bent. I'm gonna go try to fix that. This, if you try to straighten it out, you're just gonna break it right off. So I may need to replace that. Um, bits like this, that's gonna have to be addressed. And this weird fender. Well, the fender's not weird. It's just the mounting. It's just every one of, not every one, but a lot of ones I've seen, they just, they're off-centered from the tire. And I can't stand that, so that's going to have to be addressed. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video right here. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching.